Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will talk to you about a scenario for protecting columns. I've created a business scenario to explain why this might be needed. I want to create a department list, and in that list, I want to protect the department name from unwanted changes or mistakes in changing it, perhaps. So we're going to create a list, and we're going to create a content type that gathers the, the name of the department, the number of employees, and the manager for each department. So that would be a content type. And then we're going to do a workflow automation that rollbacks or prevents any change in the department name. We're going to start by creating a, a content type. We're going to go into the site information, find the all site settings, and the site content type. Then I'm going to create that. I'm just going to call the Contoso department. And that's going to be uh, based on the list content type and the item. And I'm going to place that in the group Contoso. So I can easily find that content type later. And then we're going to add the columns from the new site column employees. That's going to be a number. And of course, that will be in a new group of columns called Contoso. And we're going to not have any decimal places for our employees. That would be strange, all right? So there we have my employees. We have the manager also. And that's going to be a personal group. Let's see if that's already used, maybe. Maybe then we'll have to call it a a department manager. Let's try only manager. Yep, that worked fine. So we have employees, we have manager. Then I'm going to add another site column that was not in the specification, but that's for the rollback. And that's going to be the previous, previous department name. And eventually we're going to hide that so it's not going to be easy to change it. But for now, let's just keep it as it is. Then we're going to create a list for this. I'm going to add an app. And that's going to be a custom list. It's going to be called departments. And in that list settings, I'm going to go in and make some changes. First of all, we always want versioning settings to see what's going on. It's always a good thing in lists, in my opinion. And then we're going to go into advanced settings and allow management of content types, because we just created a content type here. And then I'm going to add from existing site content types and pick the Contoso department content type. And that's going to be the only one I want to allow in this list. So I'll remove the content type item. And then we'll see that we have all the columns that we need. We have um, the previous department name, we have the manager, we have the employees, and the title. I'm going to change that one to be called department name. Notice that I did not do that in the content type. I did that in the list, and that's important. So now we have all the information that we want to store. So this part, the information gathering part, is done. So next is the automation. So we want to do the rollback. So we have everything that we need for that. So I'm going to create a workflow connected to the departments list and set previous department name. That's what we want to do first. And that workflow is going to run when an item is created. So we're going to edit the workflow. First, we're going to go to the end always in a SharePoint 2013 workflow. And then we're going to update the list item, the item. And we're going to update the current item. We're going to set the field value previous department name to be the current item department name. So that way we have the original stored there. Yeah, so that's that workflow. And we're going to create another workflow that rolls back to the stored value. So we're going to create a new workflow. Let's go into workflows here, get another workflow connected to the same list. Roll back name changes. And of course, again, we're going to go to end. And then we're going to 
do a condition, of course, if any value equals value. If the current item, previous name of the department name, there we go. If that does not equal the current item department name, right? If there's been a change in that column, in that case, we could of course do ugly things like email the manager or, or say that somebody tried to change a department name without permission or something. But what we're gonna do is just roll back. So we're gonna update the list item again and set the current item department name to the value of the previous one. So therefore it's of course a roll back, roll back like that. All right, so let's do that and publish all of that. And now we're gonna test it. We're gonna test it by creating a new item and then trying to change the name of it, of course. So first of all, let's modify the default view. As you see, the workflows have added, been added there. I don't want them visible there. They should just be behind the scenes but I do want to see the department name, the employees, and I want to see the manager. That's the important information, right? So now let's create a new item, quick edit. There we go. And the department name is North, 10 employees, and I'll be the manager for that one, all right? And now exit like that. And then we can just go in and change it. Let's call it Northwest instead. And we'll see that it's still Northwest, but eventually the workflow should run. No, it won't because I have not modified the workflow settings of this so that it should run when a workflow is changed, of course. Let's publish this now, that's an important step. Let's try this. I hope you're learning from my mistakes there. That's an important step, of course. There we go. So let's run this now, the reset. See if that works, the workflow. The set one has already completed. That's as it should be. The rollback, that's the one that we didn't uh, set to run on change. So let's run that now. And as you see, now it's back to north. So let's try it again, do it from scratch again. I'll go into quick edit and uh, just do east 20 and Alex can be the manager of that. So there we have, of course, the, the initial east. So let's do, let's do a change. And west, I'm changing that. So let's just exit and refresh, the workflow should run. And there we go, yes, it's back to east. It took a few seconds, but it is protected. And of course, I can now also see this in the history, the version history that somebody tried to change it. So it was department name east first, and then it, somebody tried to change it to east and west, but it would roll back to, to east. Now, the final thing that I wanna do is that I want to hide this column now. So under site information, I want to go into view all site settings and look at this content type and look into the Contoso department and see that this previous department name should not be optional, it should be hidden. Let me actually show one more thing here. Let's open that in a new tab and see what's happening now. So when I create, now I've done it in quick edit before, but when I create a new item now, of course, I can see the previous department name in that form also, and that's what I'm trying to avoid now, because I don't want it to be that easy to change it, of course. So let's go in and change that to, um, it should be hidden, will not appear in forms. Let's okay that. And now let's refresh this, and then click on new item, and as we see, it should not appear. No, it doesn't. But the content type selector appears is not really needed. So let's clean that up also. It's just under list settings, we'll go into advanced settings and set it to no. Okay. So let's try one more time. 
and just test that everything works. That's always a good idea. So let's do a West department, number of employees, 40, and the manager, let's do me again. There we go. Save that. But let's modify this now. Information there, and let's edit this. Edit all. All right, so now I'm changing the department name. So now we have West by East there. But let's refresh. And it's back to West. There we have a protected column that is hidden and it's being protected by two workflows actually. So we have one that sets the previous value, the protected value, the hidden value. And then we have that one that does the rollbacks. So we have done this one also, the automation. So that concludes my demo on how to protect a column. And also you can use this method, of course, to have a separate column with the previous value. You can use that to detect changes in a particular field and do whatever you want with those, including, of course, rollback. Thank you for watching this demonstration.